right, I have a new chemical here, sodium iodide. Yes, I got this from Oxymet, Ox Onyx Met, ah, oh, whatever, that random Polish site that does all the random chemicals. What I'm going to be doing is turning this iodide all the way into periodate. Now, I was thinking about doing a method where I just used just bleach to try and go from, because I know Chemplay did iodide to I iodine, just using bleach and acid. I know you can use chlorate to go from iodide to um, iodate, and then possibly you could use hypochlorite to go from iodate to periodate. But um, instead I stumbled across um, wallenhomescience.net. I've, I've done quite a few of these since across the years, and they're all very good. And so you can, you can accuse me of, instead of experimenting, just simply copying something. But the two reasons really. One is I like doing things that I know will actually work. <laughs> And two, I just really like chlorine gas. <laughs> it's actually one of my favourite gases to work with. As soon as I saw, oh, I'm not using hypochlorite, it's just using chlorine, I was like, yes, love chlorine. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be generating some chlorine, just passing it through an empty flask here, just to catch anything that foams over, which is a very good tip, um, and one I always generally try and do. And then into our solution of iodide here, which will have quite a lot of sodium hydroxide in it, and will be heated quite hot. We're just gonna keep pumping chlorine through it all day <laughs> until it gets dark, which is about now. All right, we got 50 grams of sodium hydroxide in here, which is quite a lot, so we're gonna to to take some care here. This is adding 100 mils of distilled water, but we're gonna add about a total of 220 odd, I would think. Definitely have some stirring on, because it could get quite violent otherwise. All right, so that's gotten up to nearly boiling, and it still hasn't all dissolved yet, so. Probably should have chilled this water before or something like that, but that's okay. The water, we want the water to be boiling anyway, so as long as everything's safe, I'm happy. And here's 10 grams of very lumpy sodium iodide. Whoop, we won't let it splash because that could really hurt our skin. Yep, um, Wallen uses TCCA and uh, hydrochloric acid, which is trichloroisocyanuric acid. Um, so like pool chlorine basically from hardware stores, but not calcium hypochlorite. Um, and this is the method I recommend for making chlorine too, because I've tried quite a few and this is definitely outstandingly the best. Hydrochloric to the TCCA because it's like really powdery, the stuff that I had that was randomly in this yogurt container, but you know, I can't really get so mad at, you know, myself from five years ago. That's what I used to do, but these days I'd store that in a glass jar or something rather than a real shit yogurt container that's fallen apart, but whatever. I honestly just built a web between that hot plate at like 150 degrees full of like chlorine and that flask full of chlorine. And go, you go little guy. And you go. You do you I guess. You do you. And once again I'm using the Teflon tubing uh, because it's really the only tubing that's going to survive chlorine. Um, and it, it works really good. I've sealed the joints once again with Teflon tape around the outsides to hold them there because otherwise they don't really hold on there. But um, yeah, of course the disadvantage is I've had to adapt the setup to fit the uh, the pipes, right? Fit the, the tubing rather than the other way around. Which is fine as long as you've got enough stands, but um, yeah, like there's no changing those curves on those tubes. solution has been yellow um, for you know about an hour and a half and then uh, precipitate started to form and it's gone from that clear yellow to this cloudy white precipitate in about a uh, minute and a half two minutes so when it starts to form um, it really starts to form and this is our, our periodate so the periodate has quite a low solubility especially compared to everything else in solution well uh, sodium chloride is Mm, kind of moderate solubility, but so the fact that it's got a low solubility means that we just we're just going to pump chlorine through it until it precipitates out. That's what we've done. 
Um, so that's why I didn't bother measuring anything out in terms of the chlorine being produced or anything like that because I just was just going to keep going until we saw this precipitate and then well, we'll go for a little while longer until it looks like nothing is coming out um, but yeah, that's our product which is great it's uh, it's working so that's uh, fantastic all right I'm ready to call this a day we've got a nice crop of crystals down the bottom there um, they're looking great so I'm just going to swap this out for a bit of a chlorine scrubber just some um, sodium carbonate and some water and we'll uh, filter this through the vacuum filtration system. I've let it cool slightly so it's just warm rather than being boiling hot. If we let it cool there's the risk that we might precipitate out some chloride or something like that but Here's our product, but given the fact that it's quite insoluble and all the other impurities are quite soluble, we are going to filter and then wash with a little ice cold water and dry thoroughly on the pump. It looks really good, nice and dry, but it's like 110% yield, which I don't believe. So I think there's significant chloride contamination. So we're just gonna resuspend this in some sort of warm water and then do the filtration again and that should um, purify it a little. You know, it's. I think the solubility is too low to do a proper recrisp. All right, now once again, here's our final product. It's 16 grams, which is 88%, which is still reasonably high, but uh, I at least believe it now um, because I suspended it in about 50 mils of boiling hot water. I hope you let me get away with not testing its physical properties, but um, you know, given its low solubility, it can only be prior date, really. It was quite a fun synth, but I did actually make this with a purpose in mind. Um, there's something I want to do with it, a project. So this is the second video in that project. Um, so there was another video recently that um, I'm going to use with the prior date. Well, later down the track, actually. But feel free to guess what this project is, why I want prior dates. It's quite a bit more novel than um, uh, just copying someone else's work. You know, as much as I love wall and, you know, I've got to branch out and do some interesting stuff on my own, I guess, at some point. So, yep, so this should be great for that project. So, yep, I'll see you next time, and um, thanks for watching.